Father God, I pray that you will be upon us as we have our kids' Bible study today, Lord. I pray that you will help us understand each other's takes, Lord, and understand these verses and the stuff we're reading, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will be upon each and every one of us as we are here together, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Um, so does anyone have any praise reports? Um, my packages came in today, and I have three Lego sets now, so. <laughs> Amen. Um, I'm thankful because, yeah, I'm thankful because I can finally get braces, yeah. Because my parents weren't able to get them for um, some time, so now we were able to. So finally, my teeth can be straight. Amia, Ian. I can go. So I'm thankful because I went out with my dad yesterday and we got cupcakes and Starbucks. Amen. Ian. I'm thankful because I went with my dad to pizza and got pizza. Amen. Goya Angela, did you have anything? Yeah, I'm thankful to God too, because similar to my sister, I think Trish gave me a Lego uh, Thanos thing and I finished building it today. So I just thank God for, you know, uh, the blessings, the gifts. Uh, cause that was given to my birthday. And so I was like, you know, I'm gonna just build it. So I just want to thank God for, you know, the friendship, uh, the fellowship that we were able to have during that time. So, yeah. Man. Um, so we can start our worship. Amen. So today we'll just share, um, like two takes that you know um we've had for the past a uh, week and i can go first um so in first peter 4 verse 1 to 3 it says so then since christ suffered physical pain you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and ready and be ready to suffer too for if, for if you have suffered physically for christ we have finished with sin you won't spend the rest of your life chasing your own desires but you will be anxious to do the will of God and you will have and you have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy their immorality and lust their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties and terrible worship of idols um and basically my take was that Jesus suffered a great amount for us just so that we wouldn't um suffer for eternity but because he has suffered so much for us, he has given us so much, we owe him a lot. And um, especially here on earth, our temporal life, we basically owe him our everything um, to prepare for heaven. And since we were supposed to suffer for eternity in hell, um, because Jesus died on the cross, he gave us access to two different paths, the way to life and then the way to eternal suffering. So what better is it to suffer here on earth just for like 80 years or whatever um, than to suffer for eternity in hell? Because um, even though following Jesus, following God may come with a lot of tribulations, a lot of trials, it may come with a lot of persecution, um, that suffering is nowhere near compared to the suffering that people will face in hell. And, um, you know, basically to sum it all up, although um, we may suffer here on earth for a short time, it is better to suffer here on earth with God, who is supplying us strength, who is supplying us joy in these times um, where there, might, there may not be a lot of happiness, where there may not be a lot of joy, um, than to suffer in eternity, in eternity in hell. So did anyone want to go next? I can go next. 
Um, mine is on 1 Peter 1. It says uh, in verse 14, So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. This verse shows me that we are and we need to live as God's obedient children. We need to listen to God all the time. We need to follow Him whenever and wherever. We should not have to go back to living our old ways, where we only did stuff to satisfy our own desires, where we didn't think right about some stuff. We need to continue to do things for the Lord and only do these things to satisfy His desires. Before we got saved, we probably didn't know God and know Jesus a lot more than how we we know them now. We learned, we learned so much after we got saved and after we continued to follow and have faith in God. We continue to follow in His ways. We need to continue to learn more and more about Him, and we need to continue to love Him even more and more. Amen. Um, What verse did you use, Amia, again? Verse 14. Um, In, in the what chapter? 1 Peter 1. Okay, so I have a question for you. Um, why why are you know we doing all of these things like being obedient and then continue to follow Christ? Um, why are we doing all of those things? Yeah, we can get closer and closer to God. And then, why do you want to get closer to God? So that we can know Him and love Him more, and so that we can prepare for His coming. Amen. Good job, Amen. Um, I could go. So, um, James 14, verses 15 and 17. Uh, verse 15 says, What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. And verse 17 says, Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and not do it. What I got from verse 15 is that we are reminded of the importance of submitting our plans and desires of to God's will. We can make what we think is the best plan for us, but if we don't check in with God, uh, God's will with us, then our plans may not be his plans. So we need to seek his will in all that we do. And if it's not in line with his will, we must remember and be willing to change our plans if it's not in line with what God wants us to do, because he holds the future and his plans and purposes of our, for our lives are much more greater than ours. And verse 17 showed me that when we know God's will for us, but don't obey it immediately, it is still sin. Even though if we did it, do it later on, it is still um, sin because it is d delayed obedience. And when we have the Holy Spirit to lead us in the way we should go, where we should always obey him immediately because he has promised to lead us and guide us throughout all things. Man. Um, you said James, right? Okay. Yeah. But it goes in one Peter three as Jai says here, if people do bad things to you, do not do anything bad to them in return. If people insult you, do not insult them in return. Instead, pray that God will bless those people. That is what God wants you to do. Then you will receive the gift of God's blessing. One Peter three verse nine. What I got from this verse is that if people do bad things to you, like bully you, don't do it back because how you don't or do it makes the person who bullies you change because God blesses them. Amen. So I am. Oh, sorry. I am. Um, hmm. Yeah, we could just move on to our next takes. Okay. And I just want to add something like uh, the reason why also like just say for me, right? Uh, Amil asked you these questions is because um, it's good, you know, that we're all reading our takes and sharing our takes. And it's even wonderful uh, seeing your guys' heart um, and, you know, how you guys read your takes. But uh, also, we're also trying to grow and ascend, right? And so that's why Emil is trying to ask these different types of questions to you guys so that we may like grow and expand 
like in our takes, not just like reading off of it, right? And of course, there's nothing wrong with reading off of it, but we all we can't always rely on you know just reading our takes and just uh, reading what we have written. But it's also important for us to like share our hearts, uh, to share what truly is 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 in our hearts, you know, and what we're thinking about. And so, even though like. Uh, we're still growing. We're still learning. Um, even us, me and Amila as like facilitators, it's still kind of weird asking these types of questions. But, you know, we're all growing. And so that's the reason why uh, we're, we're getting more into this to allow us to grow, to allow us to ascend and how we share our takes, not just rely on just reading, but to also just share our heart on these different types of things. And so, yeah, so that's just something that we should expect as we go on forward. So. Whoever wants to go next, uh, with their yeah, team. yeah. Thank you. I, I'm trying to ask everybody questions, but oh I'm yeah, still, okay. we're, we're still, yeah, I'm still practicing. <laughs> yeah, we're all we're all learning. But yeah, I can I can go next. Um, in First Peter three verse eight, it says, "Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender-hearted, and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't." Re- retaliate with insults when people insult you instead pay them back with a blessing that is what god has called you to do and he will grant you his blessing for the scriptures say if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies turn away from evil and do good search for peace and work to maintain it first peter 3 verse 3 first peter 3 8 to 11 um so in these verses, Jesus wants us to really be of one mind, to be one body. And from person, from past experiences and um, things I've heard in the past about being one mind and one body, I've never really thought of it this way. Um, but the perspective that is given here is sympathizing and just having empathy for one, for each, each other. And... Um, when I thought about this, I just noticed how big of a part that plays in into being one body, into being one mind. Because when we understand and um, when we, you know, um, help each other with how we're feeling, then it really helps us to grow as, you know, a person um, and as a body um, that follows Jesus. Because when we really get into that aspect of, just loving your brother and sister and being there for them and just understanding where they come from instead of, you know, judging, judging them and trying to help them out of it. It, it grows us closer just as, you know, um, talking to God um, grows us closer with him or reading the Bible grows us closer to him. In that same sense, um, our sympathy, our empathy with one another will help us to have this tighter bond um, to follow Jesus. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and I also just want to add, uh, as you were sharing, because this oneness, um, I, I, I also really agree with what you said about how it's talking about sympathizing, empathizing, having compassion for one another as a body of Christ. And, and something that I also just want to add is that when we as a body of Christ are one and made one, you know we are one with the spirit and when when we and when we and when we are one with the spirit you know we are able to move and work in unity so just say for example as a body of christ it's so important that we work in unity because as we grow in our understanding of how jesus sees us of how jesus um, perceives every one of us of how jesus feels for one of us you know when we draw close to that when we have a greater understanding of how jesus feels for us you know we are able to share that with others and we are able to you know have that same type of love for one another and so that's why you know in first peter 3 this is what it's talking about to to love each other as brothers and sisters to be tender-hearted to have a humble attitude not because of our own good self or not because we are good people but because we are all in this pursuit of trying to be like christ you know and so that's also part of this oneness of this unity as a body of christ and so as we continue to you know grow as a body of christ it's so it's it's important to also draw near to what god feels about us because um in return that's how we will also be that's how we will also be able to feel for one another and so that's just something that i wanted to add as well amen yeah i totally agree 
especially from like even with like my friends like the more we just understand each other the more we just you know persistently try to um help each other with how we feel it it brings us closer and it it opens us up to more trust and and just more kindness um so anybody want to go next i can go next uh my other one is 1 peter 4 what i got from 1 peter 4 is that it says here but those people will have to explain to god what they have done he is ready to judge every person whether they are alive now or they have already died 1 peter 4 verse 5 What I got from this verse is that even if people did bad things, even once, they have to repent. And if they didn't repent, they are gonna be judged by God. God. Amen. So, Ian, why is it important that we repent so that we don't be judged by God? Because when we repent, God forgives our sins. Okay. Good job. Anybody want to go next? Um, I could go. So First Peter um three verse fourteen says, "But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats." And um, Jesus suffered for our benefit, so we shouldn't be surprised to suffer um for His sake. We have learned that being a follower of Jesus isn't easy, whether it's from pastora. um other preachers or um just reading the bible and yet we still believe in him because we know that he is real and we've experienced him move and um we continue to follow him because we know that uh we could always um trust in him and yeah amen yeah amia um my thoughts are on When Peter three verses fourteen and also fifteen, it says, "But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of that. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. These verses show me that we can and we will suffer even if we are doing the right thing, even if it gets harder and harder every time we continue to do the right thing. We still need to do the right thing." Doing the right thing is following God, pleasing Him and only Him. Doing whatever He leads us or wants us to do. Doing good and right things, spreading the good news and many more. Those times we suffer can sometimes be tests to test our faith. So we need to be thoughtful, watchful, and careful. God tests us by testing our faith. One way He can test us is by sending someone and telling them to ask about our hope as a believer. We do not lie and say we don't we don't know God, but we explain our life of God and our love for God and what God has in store for everyone. Amen. Um. Oh, so it says here in verse fifteen, right? You read it in the NLT, right? Okay. Um, and if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Um, so you want to expand expand on that one, Amia? Like, like why is it so important that we are ready to explain our hope? As a believer, or in other words, our testimony. Because、uh, even if our hope or testimony isn't like big or such, or like how we got saved is big, you can still change someone's life. But yeah, like how? Why is that important? Wait, what's the question again? Um. So in verse fifteen, it says, "Instead, you must worship." Wait, sorry. Oh yeah, in verse fifteen, instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Um. And my question is, why should we always be ready to explain our testimony, our our hope as a believer?
because we don't know if it can change someone's life. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. But also because just knowing ourselves, um, our testimony, and showing that to other people, like you said, um, you don't know what it'll do to them. But for sure, our hope as a believer will encourage people to um, and show them the love and kindness that God has showed us. So yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I just wanted to add a little bit more. Okay. Kui, Angela, did you want to add to anything? Uh, I'm okay, but I just want to say, like, I know, like, this is kind of weird, you know, kind of uh, funny, uh, like, with, with what's happening right now. But something that we just want to do with Kids Bible Study is we don't we don't just want to go in the meeting, say our takes, and then leave, right? We just, we really want to be able to share our hearts here in Kids Bible Study. So, like, even if someone shares a take, just say, uh, Tintin shares a take, right? And there's something that you also want to say or, or you also want to add, like, feel free to do that. Like, um, and when whenever you have questions regarding something that you've read, you know, you can also bring those up here in Kids Bible Study because, you know, we're, I, I feel like if you guys understand the whole Bible, wow, that's great. But I'm pretty sure there are some questions, there are some things that you want to bring up and some things that you want to, you know, uh, ask uh, during kids bible study and so that's just something that we want to do more um as we go on and as we continue and so yeah it'll feel a bit awkward it'll feel weird it'll feel it'll feel uncomfortable for a while but we're all we're really trying to do is, is to just grow in our in our in sharing our hearts and sharing these takes and to just you know not just show up here share takes read off our takes and then leave but to really have conversations with one another right and so that's just my hope and our hope and what we want to do you know for kids bible study and so i'll just close us in prayer uh dear god we just want to thank you for today we thank you uh for gathering us here together in this place as kids bible study lord we just want to thank you father for um these precious souls here within us uh my sister amia amil ayan and myself we thank you for allowing us to gather every week to share our takes to share our hearts lord regarding what regarding what we what we have read and we just want to thank you for always moving here in our midst for you have said in your word that if two or three are gathered in your name there you are in the midst of them and so we just want to thank you holy spirit for continuously leading us and guiding us i pray that you show us lord the way that the way to live and that you continue to light our hearts on fire for your word as we continue to read study and meditate on it and so i just pray that you continue to bless these kids may you continue to um, lead them lord as they continue with their lives and we just want to thank you once again for allowing us to gather here together in this place we thank you and we love you lord in jesus name we pray amen, amen.